Hello everyone, I'm Dalu. Today I'm going to introduce my work, SparseSoup, an analytical approach to sparse sensor accelerator modeling. As we all know that many popular applications use sparse sensor algebra, such as sparse neural networks, circuit simulations, or data science. These data and computation intensive applications often introduce inefficient processing on general purpose processors. To solve the problem, computer architects have been looking at a variety of sparse tensor accelerators, forming a very large design space. Here, we show some sample designs from recent years. At a high level, these sparse tensor accelerators aim to exploit the sparsity in the workload to improve the overall hardware efficiency. However, we make the observation that these proposals often are depending on diverse design-specific terminologies. As a result, it is really hard for general architects to understand the meanings behind these terminologies, not even mentioning the interactions between the complex design decisions. This is a phenomenon with it makes the design space of sparse tensor accelerators not only large, but also extremely unstructured and confusing. Thus, it becomes increasingly important for us to find a way to systematically understand and explore the design space of sparse tensor accelerators. We believe computer architects can benefit from a modeling framework that is flexible to cover the diverse points in the design space fast to allow short turnaround time for thousands of evaluations and accurate, which allows us to have high fidelity modeling results. The question now becomes, is there any existing work that meet our requirements? Unfortunately, we find existing modeling frameworks insufficient to meet our goals. Design-specific cycle-level simulators focus on detailed modeling of the designs. As a result, they often have slow simulation speed and inflexible parameterization to present other designs. On the other hand, general analytical modeling framework are fast, accurate, and flexible for the set of architecture they support. However, none of the existing work focus on analyzing the sparsity support that's often common in sparse tensor accelerators. To solve the problem, we propose SparseLoop, the first analytical modeling framework for sparse tensor accelerators. At a high level, SparseLoop works taking the workload specification. Here, we use a convolutional layer in the deep neural network as an example. The second input of sparse loop is called architecture, which describes our sparse tensor accelerator design. The last input of sparse loop is what we call mapping, which defines how the workload can be programmed onto the architecture. Mapping includes the, how data transfers between different storage levels and how compute can happen in parallel. By analyzing the three inputs, sparse loop generates the energy consumption and cycle counts of this evaluation. Now, I'm going to take a high-level description of the challenges sparse loop have faced and our solutions to such challenges. First, sparse loop needs to understand the workload characterization because the performance of common sparse tensor accelerators is often data dependent. More specifically, a modeling framework needs to understand the non-zero value locations in various sub-tensors of the workload. However, we all know that popular workloads can have very large tensors. Thus, traversing the exact non-zero values in each subtensor can make the simulation speed extremely slow. To solve the problem, Sparsu proposes the statistical characterization approach. For example, the weights in the structure of Pundi and then can be represented with a fixed structure density model, where every subtensor has the same density degree. On the other hand, the weights in the unstructured prune DNN can be represented with a uniform random distribution, where the larger subtensor have a smaller density deviation and smaller subtensor have a larger density deviation. Another popular density model would be what we call banded distribution, which describes a tensor with non-zero values clustered along the diagonal. This tensor is very helpful for scientific simulation applications. With statistical characterization, sparse loop is able to ensure both the speed and accuracy of our evaluations. Now that we have characterized our workloads, can we better characterize our architectures? As we can see from the previous design space, the descriptions of the architectures are extremely unstructured and confusing. 
To solve the problem, SparseLoop aims to provide a systematic way to describe these architectures. To do that, we make the observation that sparse sensor accelerators, sparse optimizations often rely on two high level opportunities. First, zero values can be compressed away. And second, ineffectual operations such, such as multiplications and additions involving zeros can be eliminated. Different sparse sensor accelerators implement different optimizations exploiting such opportunities at different architecture levels. And we classify such implementations into three high-level sparse acceleration features. We are going to use this example accelerator architecture organization to illustrate how these features can be applied to different levels in the architecture. The first feature we are going to introduce is called format, which refers to choice of tensor representations. For example, the CSR representation is a compressed format that sparse loop supports. In fact, sparse loop employs a very flexible way to represent the formats and can support a variety of different formats. As you can see here, format can only be applied to different storage levels. Here, we have global buffer and buffer as two storage levels. The second net feature is called gating, which refers to the fact that we can explicitly let the hardware units stay in idle whenever we see some ineffectual operations. Gating can help us to save energy, and as we can see here, gating can be applied to both the storage levels as well as the parallel compute unit. Here are the modifiers. The next feature is similar to gating. It is called skipping. It also is related to the fact that we can eliminate ineffectual operations. However, instead of letting the hardware stay in idle, we explicitly fast forward to the next effectual operation. As a result, skipping can not only save energy, but also can help us to save time. With this classification, we are able to more systematically describe the sparsity-related optimizations implemented in these architectures. Let's take a look at some examples. First, the Aris style architecture. We are going to use different color coding to represent features applied to different outputs in our workload. In the Aris style optimization, we see that in the innermost level, the format feature is applied to one outbrand and the gating feature is applied to two outbrands. In the second generation of Aris architecture, however, they improved the architecture so that the format feature is often applied to two outbrands to multiple memory levels. And similarly, they replace the gating with the skipping to two outbrands to improve the processing time. Another optimization style is proposed by Extensor, which focuses on hierarchical skipping of different outbrands at all the levels in our architecture. This makes the processing speed extremely fast when we have a very sparse tensor. As you can see here, different sparse acceleration features can be implemented in different ways, and we can combine them differently as, as well. So as you can imagine, the next challenge I'm going to talk about is related to the complex interaction between different design aspects, and that interaction can lead to very slow modeling speed. Please keep, keep in mind that in addition to these sparse acceleration features, there are also other design aspects that the simulation framework needs to understand, such as how data is transferred and how the underlying hardware is designed. To solve this challenge, Sparsu proposed a decoupled modeling process internally. As you can see here, we have three steps, data flow modeling, sparse modeling, and microarchitecture modeling. Each step focuses on an orthogonal design aspect, and we make sure that each step is kept at tractable complexity. With the decoupled modeling methodology, Sparsu is able to keep the modeling speed reasonable in the end. So with the understanding of sparse loop, let's take a look at its high-level modeling speed and accuracy. Compared to second-level simulations, sparse loop is more than 2,000x faster. That means evaluations that used to take months to finish now only need to take hours. In terms of accuracy, on the right, we're showing example validation on a DSTC accelerator architecture. The y-axis is the processing latency, and the x-axis are the different scenarios with the operands A and B tensors having different density degrees. The blue bars are the baseline, and the red bar is our estimation. 
As you can see here, SparseLoop is not only to keep track of the relative trends of our different performance, it is also able to keep the absolute estimation fairly accurate. In fact, across a set of well-validated, well-known DNA accelerators, SparseLoop is always, always able to maintain relative trends and achieve 0.1% to 8% error in cycle counts and energy consumption. Due to the time of this presentation, I'm going to eliminate a lot of details, but you can find more information in our paper to answer your questions. For example, can we use SparseLoop to build the next generation Sparse Tensor Core Accelerator? Or what would happen if we use a Sparse DNA Accelerator to run a much sparser HPC workloads or the other way around? So please definitely check out more details in the paper to get a better understanding of the SparseLoop infrastructure. In summary, SparseLoop is a fast, accurate, and flexible analytical modeling framework that enables tensor accelerator design space exploration. It achieves more than 2,000x speed up compared to cycle level simulations. It maintains relative trend and achieves fairly accurate absolute estimations. It also is flexible to help designers to understand the critical design trade-offs. In addition, we have some public resources that allow users to better understand the tool. There is the available artifact, and we also have a tutorial at sparsloop.mit.edu.